Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our cranking and open loop fuel we're gonna be working with in our GM Gen 4 ECMs. So we're gonna find when we go to crank over our engine. We have to specify the amount of fuel that we need to deliver so the engine's gonna fire properly. Now, we're gonna find that that's gonna come from two different tables in our actual calibration file. We're gonna find we have an air mass registration table and we find a heavy desired air fuel table. Both of those combined are gonna be giving us a fuel mass and then converting it into an ejector pulse width. I'm gonna be breaking it down, what tables do what, and how we can take a look at this in our VCM scanner. We're also gonna be taking a look at our open loop fuel and how the ECU is gonna be transitioning from our closed loop into the open loop and how we can go and use the open loop tuning technique to tune all of our tables, whether it's gonna be our mass airflow table or our speed density operating system. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at our cranking fuel as well as our open loop fuel tables in our GM Gen 4 ECMs. So the example I have open here is gonna be my two bar operating system speed density number four, revision four. That's what we have for our Yukon Denali, our test vehicle here. So we took a look at this in a previous video when we were looking at doing our wide open throttle tuning. Now we're gonna evaluate this file here because I have it open and that's what the vehicle I have connected to right now we're gonna be doing our scanning with. This is gonna be an E38 ECM. We'll find that the E40 and the E67s are gonna be virtually identical in the way the programming language is gonna be working here. So what we learn from this, we can apply it to the other ones. We jump in here to engine and we move in here general idle airflow we take a look we're gonna find we have a cranking ve table so we find we open this up it's gonna be based on engine speed and manifold pressure so we see the values in here all 100 percent this is going to be assuming 100 percent volumetric efficiency and its calculations of the air mass registration and we can find under cranking that the mass airflow sensor may not provide the best means of registering our air mass. And that's why we have this table here. It's gonna be using some calculations going on in the background. Typically speaking, we never need to alter the values in here. We're gonna find we have a more effective way to do it in another table. But this is gonna be part of the equation to figure out what the injector pulse width is actually going to be. So if we take a look at our basic equation of fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by our desired air fuel, this is gonna be representing the air mass portion of that equation of where the numbers come from from the air mass registration. Let's close this. We also find we have a barrel multiplier. So if we go up or down in elevation, we'll find it's gonna have a multiplying effect for our cranking trim. So we find that this is again, our air mass portion of our cranking fuel. Let's take a look at the desired air fuel portion of it. We have to move over to fuel here. We're gonna go into general. We're gonna go here to cranking fuel. We see fuel air multiplier. We jump into this table. It's gonna be based on our cranking engine coolant temperature, basically wherever our engine coolant temps at, as well as our crank time. So the amount of time we're actually cranking the engine. 